Hello everyone. First of all, thanks a lot for joining uh, this webinar on the world's most advanced historian. Just to give you a brief background, we are from Altizon. Altizon is a Internet of Things focused company. And a little bit about myself. I'm Yogesh Kulkarni. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Altizon Systems. Today we are going to talk about the historians, their journey, and primarily compare the existing historians versus the new technology historians. So with that, let me begin. Just a little bit about how you can interact with me today. The audience will be in the mute mode by default. Attendees can interact with the presenter in the following two manners. One, use the chat window. And second, you could raise a hand and uh, you know that will help me understand if anyone of you have any questions moving on all right in today's world if you now look at it data is the new oil the reason is there is a lot of data around us even a simple equipment will have lots of sensors and these sensors are the data generating elements a lot of data gets generated in many of these equipments and systems and especially when it comes to manufacturing whether it is a process manufacturing or continuous manufacturing or a discrete manufacturing the data generated by these machines is immensely helpful unfortunately many times this data is not at all used because most of these machines especially in discrete manufacturing processes most of these machines are not even connected to either the local internet or the global inter internet and hence this data is just lying on those machines itself and we call it a data island problem because the data is there on that island itself and you cannot really do anything about it but as if you look at the petrochemical industry or the oil and gas industry huge machineries are connected and any downtime especially unplanned downtime on any of these lines is extremely expensive as far as the business is concerned and a lot of insight can be achieved by examining the data that the systems and sensors and equipments are generating the unfortunate part is that this data is actually many times not even looked at in process industries the data is collected and stored for historical reasons and the software system that actually does this is called as historian but then the objective of these uh, historian is just to store the data historically in historical nature because it's a time series data the real question is what do we do with this data now that we have the data let's take a look at the next slide as we were discussing the volume of the data is continuously increasing there are newer systems which come up with lots of new sensors there are newer elements there are uh, energy meters there are weather meters there are different types of sensors which are continuously generating a lot of data as the events happen on the manufacturing setup and as I was saying, it is extremely important for a process industry to capture this data and continuously monitor this data. Just to give an example of continuous monitoring of this data, imagine an oil and gas industry or a plant in which the temperature data or the temperature sensor values are continuously monitored. We cannot really ignore if that temperature sensor is giving us the value which is more than the threshold because it could be extremely fatal not just to the plant but to the people who are working there that's why continuous monitoring is also required on critical process lines and as the newer systems are coming into play as the uh, newer sensors are coming into the play the volume of the data is continuously increasing However, the most important question or aspect that we need to consider is 
it is imperative for the businesses to make sense out of this data because just gathering this data and storing it for historical reasons may not achieve anything to the business because there will be data but you are not really using it so it is extremely important for businesses to make sense out of this data as i was saying the traditional historians were built decades ago and i may be actually exaggerating a little bit over here by depicting traditional historians and advanced technology historian in this fashion but this is just an analogy the traditional historians have been in existence for long almost more than a decade and a half of existence because these historians were designed and implemented almost 15 20 years back the systems or the technology that they used to develop the historians is also quite old some of the historians have kept pace with the industry and the technological advancements and they have been upgrading themselves but there is certainly a need where a historian is built using very advanced technology available as of today and then the magic that it can do with the data that it can collect because it's an advanced technology system is enormous so with this let me actually introduce the product from altizon it's called datonis h this product is actually a platform or we call it as a historian platform to which you could connect everything or you could connect anything for example you could connect any sensor on the uh, production line be it a discrete manufacturing line or be it a process industry line be it a continuous industry line for example any petrochemical plant or oil and gas plant or auto component making plant you can connect any of the systems or sensors seamlessly the data is collected and transferred in a secured fashion to the product to the platform on a server with this you could also remotely manage your devices so for example if remotely you want to turn off a machine given the right protocols used this is absolutely easy to do it once the things or the sensors on the line are connected you can do a lot of processing with the data you could define the structure because necessarily when the data comes in to the server it is by nature in an unstructured format the traditional historians struggle over here because they use old relational database models but since the nature of the data is unstructured datonis actually uses no sql database but you could give the or define the structure to suit your business processes in the software you could get the insights from the data that is being collected in real time generate notification and alerts instantaneously and store this data securely just to give an example of notification and alerts as i was talking earlier if a temperature sensor is crossing a threshold value an instant notification and alert could be generated to send an sms or email or a high alert notification to the concerned person or a team of person to take action so that the actionable time is not lost with this enormous data is stored because you can consider thousands of sensors and elements actually connected and streaming data to the software once this data is collected on the server basically you own this data you could create lots of visualizations on top of this data in terms of graphs and charts and comparative analysis or you could build applications using apis that are provided by the product to inject this data into your own systems or to view this data within your business context and you could also integrate the data that is coming in with your line of business applications we provide a saas based deployment model for this and we do the cloud hosting of the product however it is also possible to deploy the product on a private cloud or in your own data center on premise or at the location where your plant is moving on so if you look at the deployment architecture over here there is a discrete process there could be a batch process there could be a continuous process plants all the elements are connected to an opc server 
this is how traditional historians also do uh, collect the data because all the data or the controllers and sensors are connected to the OPC server. But OPC server is not capable of storing the historical nature of the data. They just give you what is the current state or reading or value of a particular sensor. What we have done is integrated with the OPC servers or majority of the OPC servers available for all the controllers by developing an adapter to the OPC server which also which connects to the Tetonis Edge platform. So all the data that is coming in on the OPC server is in real time injected into the Datonis Edge server. And since Datonis Edge is hosted on cloud, it could be available across plants. So now you could actually connect multiple plants simultaneously to the same central server, which is hosted on cloud, and it is capable of processing a heavy stream of data events coming from all the plants and from all the thousands of sensors. You could add new sensors because a plant is never static. You are continuously going to add either new sensors or new machines or change the layout, change the upgrade the machines. You could all this is possible without changing anything on the server. Now traditional historians actually struggle over here because as I said, they use relational database models. So any new data event type or change over there forces them to touch to the database layer on the server side. You could build dashboards on the fly on the data on edge because we provide a drag and drop dashboard facility on data on edge. You could do a lot of trending and analytics on the data that is coming up. And you could also do a remote condition monitoring of multiple plants from your central location. So if you now actually compare the traditional historians and Datonis Edge at a little deeper level, you will see that traditional historians have mostly have an only on-premise deployment option, which means that you have to have heavy infrastructure need. You need to take care of the servers. You have to have a data center for that the network availability, power availability, data security, all these aspects come into play, which are on you as a business. As I said, they use the relational database, which is limited in its nature of handling the data. Because this is an on-premise deployment, mostly one historian is needed or one historian installation is needed for every single plant. And hence, with that historian, you get only single plant operations insights. It also has non scalable storage. And the real question is, agreed, all this data is collected, but what do you do with this data? Because most of this data, even though collected by historians, is not really used for further processing or analytical reasons. On Datonis Edge, basically, it is on cloud. That's a preferred model. However, as I said, you could also deploy this on premise, but the power of cloud a deployment enables you to connect multiple plants on a single historian. Because this is hosted on cloud by us, there are very minimal infrastructure needs. You don't have to take care of the power availability, the storage, the network, and all those things. And you do not really need to spend a lot of upfront infrastructure investment. We use no SQL database, which means that we do not really assume any data structure for an incoming event stream. So we could accept any data in any structure in any format and we will still be able to handle it. You can also do centralized operations inside because all the data across plants is coming to a centralized repository. It has a scalable storage because we host product on the cloud. You could imagine that the storage is really virtually unlimited. The bigger advantage over here is that we provide a lot of advanced analytics capabilities through data on SH. Now that we have lots and lots of historical data, the real power of this data is to do analysis of the historical patterns and do things like predictive failures, predictive maintenance, proactive support. All these possibilities are enabled once you have the advanced analytics algorithms in place. 
How do we do this? We have the entire big data Hadoop engine embedded into the historian. Because traditional historians do not have this facility or they were not built when this technology was available, Big Data Engine enables us to do lots of complex event processing. And this enables us not just to capture the sequence of events, but also to analyze and process the complex event structures that are being formed by this continuous stream of data from thousands of sensors. That being said, if you are more interested into knowing about this product, please reach out to us on sales at artisan.com. Here are the numbers wherein you could also call. And I'll now open up for questions. All right, so there is a question over here. And thanks, Varun, for the question. Let me go back to one of the slides to answer your question. The question is, what kind of OPCs are supported and how do we do the OPC integration? You see, OPC itself is a software and OPC's job is to collect data in form of tags from most of the controllers to which it is connected. Most of the controllers, either from Rockwell or Siemens, you take any controller company, they provide their own OPC servers. However, in most cases, in most plants, the deployment of these controllers is heterogeneous. It is hard. It is very rare to find a plant where only one type of controllers are available. So in that case, the OPC server comes to our rescue and we could actually, you know, collect the data from all these controllers, either over serial port or like RS485 or RS232 or Modbus and collect all the tag database from these controllers to OPC server. OPC server's job is to just record record in the sense capture the current values of all the tags from the controllers to which it is connected to. What we have done is developed an adapter which on one side connects to the OPC server and extracts the current values from all the tags that are specified over there in the configuration, reads it at a specified frequency level. The frequency could be either milliseconds or second or you know a couple of seconds depending on the refresh frequency of OPC server and fetch these values or extract these values from the OPC server and push that over the internet to the Daytonus H historian. Daytonus H historian then takes all the events coming in as streams from all these OPC server OPC clients and processes those in real time by doing aggregations and by doing scheduled aggregations if we have to run any complex algorithms on top of the event that are being generated. I hope I have answered your question. So just to give you an example, in one of our customer cases, we connected two plants where there was a complete mix of heterogeneous controllers. So we put up the required OPC servers over there, connected all those controllers to the OPC server and the OPC clients on these OPC servers and then instantaneously the data that was being captured by OPC servers started streaming to the Daytonis Edge history. Any further questions? All right, so it appears that uh, there are no more questions. I would like to then pause over here and uh, refresh the comparisons across traditional historians and Daytonis and extend my thanks to you for joining for today's webinar. It was a pleasure to describe our product in front of you. And if you want any more further information or clarification on our product, please feel free to reach out to us on sales at artisan.com. Thank you.